In today's show, the Blazers lose to the Lakers in L.A., and with Portland light on point guards, Skylar Mays is proving he belongs. Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up? World is your past first point guard and Trail Blazers reporter Mike Richmond. You are listening to another episode of Locked On Blazers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Thanks for making this show your first listen. Coming at you Monday through Fridays each and every weekday, so make it a part of your daily routine. Make it your first listen. It's Locked On Blazers, your team every day. In today's show, we're going to talk about the Blazers' loss to the Lakers. We'll do our fastest recap in the West. We'll talk about the the shifting guard. Scoot Henderson's likely out till December. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon's sideline day-to-day slash indefinitely with a hamstring injury. No Anthony Simons until you know the middle of December. Skylar Mays has an NBA contract, and he showed in the last two games and particularly tonight against the Lakers that he deserves it. Plus his two way spot has been filled by Jamari Bouye. We'll talk about that. And then we got the doo-op debut. Doo-op Breathe played in his first game as a Blazer after a monster G league opener. Uh, We will talk about what that means for the Blazers going forward with some new faces due to some injuries, but let's do what we do. Our fastest recap in the West, the Blazers on Sunday head to the crypt and lose to the Lakers 116-112. Uh, the Blazers trailed 28-31 at the end of the first quarter. I heard this on the Lakers broadcast. This is um, pretty incredible. This is game number 10 for the Lakers. They're 5-5. They're five and five. Blazers fall 3-6. and six. Game number 10. In the first nine games of the NBA season for the Lakers this year, they'd lost every single first quarter until Sunday night. What a... What a what a weird team. More on how weird um, and kind of uninspiring the Lakers are in this one. Lakers playing without LeBron James, who who sat out after, uh, you know, he he my, my man needed my man needed a night off. Gets a night off. They play without him. Uh, Rui Hachimura, Torian Prince, and Cam Reddish start on the wings in LeBron's stead. Uh, Blazers. Down three after one, but they battle back in that second quarter. Big first half from Matisse Liable, 14 points and hit four three-pointers. They weren't respecting him from the corners, and he let it fly and made four of them. You love to see it. Blazers up 57-56 at the break. Game kind of gets away in the late in the third quarter. Uh, the, the, the Lakers finally, um, you know... Clearly, they thought that we can, we can beat the shorthanded Blazers without old King James in the lineup, old old uh, you know Bronny's dad, and um, then in the third quarter it was like, oh yeah, we have Anthony Davis, and he was the best player on the court, and it, and it looked like in those final six minutes, final five and a half minutes of of the third, that the Blazers really or the, the Lakers really were going to pull away, and this one's going to slip away from the Blazers. They're now. L.A. takes a 91-90 lead into the fourth quarter. And then being the Lakers, I've watched a ton of them over the last few years, just a, a deeply unserious franchise. Um, at least they wear white on Sundays. That's a nice tradition. You know, the other thing they do is they buckle whenever good things happen to them. Up 91-80, heading into the, heading into the third. Jackson Hayes gets an uncontested dunk, or heading to the fourth, rather. rather. Jackson Hayes gets an uncontested dunk to begin the fourth quarter. Uh, Rena is rocking. They're feeling good, and they give up a 12-0 run immediately. 12-2 to start the quarter, and 12-0 after the Jackson Hayes dunk. Blazers cut it to one with 8:44 left. They cut it to one with five minutes and three seconds left uh, on a Jeremy Grant three, and then a Jeremy Grant layup, pump fake three, show and go. I don't know why Anthony Davis jumped, but he did. Uh, Blazers cut it to three. 103, 104, 318 left. This is a ball game. Looked like the Lakers were going to pull away a little bit and just kind of stiff arm the Blazers down the stretch, but they don't because they don't. They play a ton of close games. That's what the Lakers do. And in the final three minutes, the the biggest moments of the game happen in this, for me, this immediately the two possessions following uh, the, 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 the Jeremy Grant layup to cut it to one with three minutes and 18 seconds left. 
AD gets it in the post. It gets on the right side. He's he's been good. Like he's he's having a really nice game. The Blazers haven't had. They just don't have anyone who can guard him. They've tried you know not putting DeAndre Ayton on him. They're putting trying putting DeAndre Ayton on, but he, DeAndre Ayton on him. They're trying they're trying to figure out how to kind of how to deal with him, how to deal with him in pick and roll, how to help off the backside of the pick and roll, all those things. They're they're trying to get a solution. So this time they just straight up send a double team. They send the double team. Anthony Davis shoots over the top of the double team and he misses. And Rui Hachimura tips in a dunk because nobody slides down. That was Shaden Sharp responsibility do I think Shaden Sharp could have got there in time and, and like cleanly boxed out Rui Hachimura maybe it's no guarantee but maybe but he didn't he, the effort wasn't quite there for him he's just late he's late um and Rui gets an uncontested dunk and the Lakers go up by three Blazers come down three-point game you know we're we're, we're we're pushing towards two minutes now Shaden Sharp goes up like he's gonna shoot it realizes that he's not getting the call has to bail himself out from a shot throws a bad half-court pass um it's tries to you know he it's just he got caught in the air it happens um but tries to find Skylar Mays ball gets tipped and kind of bounces out towards half court and DeAndre Ayton had a half second where he could have taken a hard step and gone for it but he took a hesitation he had a moment there a half step half step where it's either he hesitates or he goes he hesitated and because he hesitated Torian Prince is able to chase down a loose ball gets a run out dunk and the Lakers go up by five for me that's 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 the game right there. That's the game. Lakers, Blazers immediately call the timeout. Um, do I think DA would have beat T- Torin Prince the ball? I don't know. I don't know. But he, but when he hesitated, he gave himself zero opportunity to do so. Um, it's uh, both of these plays. It's like, do I think Shaden Sharp would have got the block out? I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't think so. Watching it, watching it back, do I think D- DeAndre Hayden could have gotten the ball? I don't know. He's certainly not as fast. But it's as soon as you, as soon as you don't go right away as soon as you watch the ball and say i think that one's going out of bounds it's over you had no chance like you just don't have the foot speed um unless you unless you immediately reacted it was too late they give up they give up a couple easy buckets or a couple buckets down five take a timeout chauncey billups draws up a nice little play ends up with uh with a little pin in screen side screen to get jeremy grant a three he hits it it's a two-point game but Anthony Davis closes, hits a jumper, and then when they double team on the next possession after Jeremy Grant missed three, he finds Rui Hachimura at the rim, at the, uh, big easy dunk because uh, the double team or the defense behind didn't help off the, help fr- help the double team. Lakers hold on. They do end up stiff arming the Blazers. It got a little hairy in the final three minutes for them, but that's your fastest recap in the West. A classic seven minute version of those Blazers lose 116 112. Here's your box score numbers to know Jeremy Grant led the way 23 points, five boards, and an assist. Matisse Thibel, 14 in the first half, zero in the second half. Did not, did not make another three pointer after halftime. Shaden Sharp, 19 points, three boards, four assists, but the big number seven turnovers. Uh, I thought the Lakers did a good job of. Of sitting on his right hand and saying, "You, if you're going to beat us, you're going to go left." Um, and I think other teams will look to do that. Other teams might have the personnel, um, but that's going to be a challenge for Shaden. Now that teams know and he's the guy, it's he's they're going to they're going to prey on your weaknesses. I, I will say he had a bad game. Like I, I don't think Shaden Sharp played very well in this game, um, and he had 19 three and four and hit three threes. Like he's he's. He's good enough to overcome it in the box score, but you know it when you see it, and I think he struggled in this one. Skylar Mays, great. I'm going to talk about him a bunch. 15 points, 12 boards. Probably the Blazers' best player on the court. Jeremy Grant was like solid in this game. Kind of a stinker for DeAndre Ayton, 12.7 boards. Uh, the Blazers were outscored by 17 in his 34 minutes on the court. Uh, Jabari Walker, 8 points off the bench. Uh, Duop Reef, 11 points off the bench. Uh, and Jamari Bouye, who we're going to talk about too in, in, later in the show, six points in his Blazers debut. Tamari Kamara doing what he does, 12 points, six boards, two assists, just active in his 23 minutes. On the Lakers' side, Anthony Davis had 30 um, with 13 boards and six assists, 18 for Cam Reddish. Ten of those came in the first quarter, eight in the final three quarters. Cam Reddish finally helped the Lakers win a first quarter. Uh, Rui Hachimura had 19. 18, 11 for Torian Prince, 11 for D'Angelo Russell, 18 off the bench for Austin Reeves, uh, 7 for Christian Wood. The non-Austin Reeves bench players combined for 9 points. Um, the Lakers are, th- uh, they do, their, their vaunted depth is either not healthy or has not shown up. Uh, that is, that's all you need to know about the first half of this one. Um, what I want to do in the second segment is I want, I, I want to talk about Skylar Mays. I want to talk about Scoot Henderson. Like as I mentioned, he's, he's, the Blazers have 
he is they've they issued an update over the weekends. He's out for an additional two to three weeks because of bone bruising. That stinks. That probably puts him out to December. Uh, so the Blazers had to make some roster decisions, and Skylar Mays was part of those roster decisions. And he showed why he deserves to be part of this thing going forward. Um, he's, he has stepped up and been really, really solid. So let's talk about Skylar Mays. We'll talk a little about, introduce you to Jamari Bouye, who's taking Skylar Mays two-way spot. That's what we'll do in the second segment. Join me there first. Let's talk prize picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. Look, it's it's basketball season, and right now you can play every single day on the prize picks app like I do. Uh, you can also play on their website, but the app is is, is clean and easy to use what you do for every entry is you pick between two and six players and it's things like points rebounds assists and steals you just go more or less than the projection set by price picks and it's not you versus the field or you versus sharks or you versus you know people who can grind out there and spend a bunch of money on dfs it's just you versus those numbers set by prize picks so the blazers play a bunch of games this week they're going to play tuesday in utah wednesday against the Cavs, friday again against the lakers uh you know that's three nights if you're a Blazer person, plus all the other games across the NBA each and every night to get in there on Price Picks and have a little fun. You can make an entry in 60 seconds, maybe three minutes if you really want to be meticulous, but quick if you want to, and then you can win some money. Plus, right now, if you use the promo code Locked on MBA, you can first deposit match up to 100 bucks if you visit pricepicks.com slash locked on MBA. So again, go to that website prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use that code locked on NBA. You get a first deposit match up to $100. They're matching you dollar for dollar up to $100 on your first deposit match. Prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use that promo code locked on NBA. All right. Let's talk about the, the guard musical chairs we've seen from the Blazers. Scoot Henderson's been out since early November with an ankle injury and the Blazers on Saturday released an update that said it's going to be out a little bit longer. Two to three weeks, according to the press release by the Blazers, when he'll be reevaluated due to bone bruising in addition to the right ankle sprain. Quote, an additional two to three weeks. So he's, he's that puts him out, you know, two weeks, if he's right on it, is like the end of November. Three weeks is December, like the beginning of December. So, you know, he's likely, this month is likely a wash for him. And it's, it's, it's no good, right? Because um, the point of this season is to see what Scoot can do, see how close he is, let him grow into what he's going to be. And then when, you know, when you're playing games in March and April, okay, this is the version of Scoot that we can build with, or this is the version, or, or here's what he can't do. Here's who he needs to play with. Here's how he fits with Shane. Like all of the, all of just these simple developmental uh, opportunities for him and data collection for how this franchise can build in the future. Just you lose a month, you know, if he's back and, it's December 5th and he plays the rest of the year. Yeah, it'll be like an asterisk, right? Like, oh yeah. And then he had the ankle injury and he missed like, you know, he missed 14 games in there or 12, you know, 12 games. And it was like, it stinks, but, but like, it, it'll be a small thing. The most important thing for the Blazers is to get him healthy. Um, I think there is, there is no reason to do anything other than get him back to hundred percent. Like what, what's, what is the point of this year? Um, if, if like to play scoot at 80% on a, on a bum ankle, get him back. Get him, you know, get him comfortable where he feels comfortable. He's healthy. He can be explosive. You're not worried about it. This like being a thing that he re-aggravates and all this stuff. It's like, get him, take as much time as you need to get him there. When he, you know, if it's, if it's December 15th or whatever, cool. Let him then like make sure he's ready to go from there. I mean, you can't prevent everything, but hopefully ready to go from, from that point in the future. That's the most important thing. So with Scoot out and Malcolm Brogdon, who missed the um, the game on Sunday with with a hamstring strain, the Blazers don't really do timelines. I mean, not, not plenty of teams don't do timelines on minor injuries. Um, other teams are like maybe more upfront with it. I've been really I've been playing close attention to how teams handle injury stuff because I've been critical of the Blazers. I would say. Plenty of teams handle it like Portland does, but the Blazers are one of the bad teams that, uh, in terms of injury injury clarity. Uh, Brogdon, you know, day to day for now, we don't know, we don't know, and Amphrey Simons is still out, so they just the Blazers are really light on ball handlers, and the guy who has to play is their starting point guard tonight, Skylar Mays. Uh, they 
converted him to from a two-way contract to a standard NBA deal. Congratulations to Skylar Mays. You absolutely, absolutely earned it. Uh, I think one of the keys for Mays is that um, he just knows exactly who he is. Uh, so like he's he has real value because you know he knows what he's going to do. And you know what he's going to do. And I think um, I, I think there's real value in just understanding your role. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more, more about him um, and kind of like getting, understanding the essence of Skylar Mays. But um, this was going to happen anyways, just because of the injuries. You With, with two-way guys, they only get 50 games. Um, and Mays, once you start the clock on your 50 games, like he was going to, he was going to get there on game like 52. Um, and just in terms of like, and they were going to have to make a decision to just reward him, go ahead and reward him. And you get to fill in behind um, and fill in behind by that. I mean, with an open two way spot, you can add someone to a two way spot and the Blazers just need guards. They need more guys who can dribble and pass a little bit. So they added a guard, uh, Jamari Bouye from, well, from, from the G league, but uh, he's, I really like I, I am I'm a Jamari Bouye, I don't know if believer, but I'm a, I'm a, certainly an appreciator of him. Uh you know, he's he's he was a five year guy at, at the University of San Francisco, you know, after after five years because of the COVID year while he was in college. In twenty twenty two he goes undrafted and spends last year playing with the Sioux Falls Sky Force uh with Miami Heat. Played with the Heat in in Summer League, went, joined the Sioux Falls Sky Force. Um, but he's just a G League guy, not a two-way contract or whatever. So he played a little bit with the Heat. He uh, appeared in four games with the Heat, and then he appeared in one game with the Wizards. He played six minutes for the Wizards. He played four like real actual minute games, including one where he played like 28 minutes for the Heat in a, in a close loss uh, last season in the 22-23 season. But and he played one six-minute stint with with the Wizards. So he has. So tonight he appears in his sixth NBA game uh, for the Blazers. He is now a two-way guy. Um, you know, he played right away. I know him from one game um i like i don't know bouye like i i here's what i know about him it's like six two offensive minded guard who went to the, who who's a don who went to the university of san francisco in that 2022 nca tournament as i'm prepping for the tournament that year um blazers were going to be you know a you know a team team with picks right and it's like this is bouye was a guy who's like he was all West Coast Conference, back-to-back -back seasons, heading into his fifth uh, year in college, and he was, you know, playing that playing that league with Gonzaga and St. Mary's and, and BYU, and, and San Francisco was going to outright make the tournament, even though they didn't win the West Coast Conference. And Bouye was like a, a guy you need to know. Like if you were if you're following the first round of the tournament, he was like a small college guy who could absolutely score, and uh, and was like going to be a fringe second rounder or maybe better than that if he if he had a nice tournament. And they only played one game, and I watched that game. I don't know if I watched the whole game, but I watched a bunch of it because I was. I only remember one game, and I, I was like, the one game I saw him play, I knew he went nuts. I looked it up today. 36, 36 against Murray State, a 7-10 matchup, opening round of the 2022 NCAA tournament. He has 36 and overtime loss to the Murray State Racers. Um, he was a hot name to know then. I kind of thought he was an NBA player. Um, again, it's like I watched him play what, like, part of a 45-minute college game, and I'm like, yep, that dude can hoop. Like, I, it's like, I don't know. Uh, but... I thought tonight, um, I thought he would be more aggressive looking for his own shot. Maybe this is like um, kind of playing nice with new teammates. But, um, you know, six points, four boards, three assists, turned it over once, played 12 minutes. Um, you know, I, he didn't, he, there was no moments that I was like, oh, but he, you know, his, the, 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 um, the little jumper, he you know he had a little jumper over uh, over Anthony Davis where it was like late clock and he had to had a nice layup inside. Like uh, I am, I will say like I'm just like a, a fan of his game, but I don't think if I had only watched this game against the Lakers, I don't think I would be that level of fan. Um, you know who I'm a, becoming a legitimate fan though is Skylar Mays. He's just what a fun basketball player. First of all, anyone that whoops. You're behind at two and a half miles an hour rocks. Like you can't speed Skylar Mays up. He just plays like he's, he's slow and he weaponizes being slow. Yeah, dog. I don't run. <laughs> like, like, what are you going to do? He just, he has a, he has a pace to him. He has a good enough handle that the pace works for him. He can get you on his hip and hold you on his hip with that, um, with those, um, sort of with the way he, he kind of get, gets that dribble in the pocket and, and then gets into pick and rolls. 
runs pick and rolls well. He has nice little floater game. Um, he, he knows what he can do. Like he's he's not a shooter, so he gets deep on pick and rolls and sets up to run deeper on on screens. And he gets himself into the middle and he gets himself. He runs. You know, he's not a leaper either, right? He, he's he's like a slow person who doesn't jump. I love this freaking dude. Um, like so he the way he gets into layups is he. Had, he had one tonight and he's done it a bunch. He's those is inside hand layups. He'll do an inside hand with his left on the right side, which is like your um, inside being the closest to the rim when you're going up for a layup or an, or inside hand, right hand, right hand, excuse me, right hand on the left side, left hand on the right side. He did it tonight against Anthony Davis. He looks corner like, oh, I'm going to kick it out. Everyone knows he passes a bunch. Like, you know, he has 15 and 12 with one turnover in 33 minutes. Like he just, um, he's just playing his speed. Uh, and he, you know, looks to the corner like he's going to pass just just a split second long enough to kind of freeze Davis and inside hands him right hand on the left side for a layup. Like he just, Mays absolutely deserves to have that, his have the spot that he does. Um I'm happy that he's that he's got got this gig because you know last year during the tank he was good like he was really solid but it was they were intentionally losing games and he was kind of like signed off the street to be like hey are you you know can you come in here and be like somewhat competent and we're going to lose to the Kings by 30 um this is a little bit different the Blazers have been competitive in these games this year I think they've been perfectly competitive if you're into if you're into them losing like just long enough to hold you into the final two minutes of every game and then like ah dang and they've had a couple fun ones that they've won as well um and Mays is He's just been solid. You know, he wasn't, you know, in the first five games, wasn't playing a ton. He was playing when they were healthy, but now they're not healthy and they just need anyone who can set things up and ride the ship and not make it. So it's just, Hey, Shade and Sharp, you have to play against a really aggressive defense for way, you know, Sharp's going to play 42 minutes every night, but like it's, it takes a lot of pressure off him. It lets them get into offense. It lets them run pick and rolls. It's, you know, still not a, still not a shooter, but he's, the funk, the, the sort of just like general, the, the general ability to make it functional, make the offense functional is, is just so fun for Mays. Like he just, like I said, he, he weaponizes being slow and he weaponizes not being able to jump. Um, and if, and as, um, I do think this is just like a minor nitpick. He's such a pass first guy and he knows that he can't shoot that. I think sometimes he does pass up jumpers that he should take. Um, that's a nitpick, right? Like we'll, they'll get there and maybe they can make it happen. And it's like, I guess what I'm asking, he went 0 for 4 from 3, but one of them was at the end of the game. So he went 0 for 3 from 3, like before the, the final buzzer. Um, I, I guess I'm asking him to go 0 for 6. Like, I guess that's what I would prefer is for him to go 0 for 6. It, is that a weird preference? Yeah, absolutely. But it is, I, I think there are times when the ball swings to him and he doesn't shoot it, and he should. Other than that, he's a freaking he's fun. He's, fr- he's fun. And he, when the Blazers made that push and, and they got close, Skylar Mays, made sure that they that they got into one you know Jeremy Grant hit two big buckets to cut it to one twice but Mays was the guy who was you know they were they cut it to 12 or they cut a, a 13 point lead to one with a 12-0 run Lakers get back up by eight Mays helps them get back there then then you know the Lakers get a bucket Jeremy Grant hits a big three and, and Mays makes sure that they're like in there in be, those in between possessions getting good shots getting himself into the floater range had an incredible floater late in this one it's just like He's fun. He's fun. I appreciate Skylar Mays. I'm going to continue to appreciate him. I'm happy that he's um, happy that he's got an NBA contract. And now we get a little uh, Jamari Bouye coming off and playing those two way minutes. The Blazers need someone else who can dribble. Uh, get well soon. Every other guard on the Blazers roster. Uh, speaking of shooting and players who aren't guards, we haven't talked about players who aren't guards really, but I want to talk about one to close the show. Duop Breathe made his Blazers debut, and he can help. I think he can help. Uh, I, I hit a big weekend for WAP. Let's talk about it to close the show. But first, let's talk about Jace Case. Look, Jace Medical wants to sort of remove some of the worry that you have in your life when things are uncertain. So, there are any number of things that can give you like that you have will feel a little bit of uncertainty, a little bit of anxiety about, but one of the things shouldn't be having supplies to the, it's having access and a supply of the medicine you need. So whether that's life-saving antibiotics that you can get through the, uh, the Jace case on jacemedical.com or whatever medic, med- medications you need, including ED pills. So say you're traveling or you're worried about um, supply chain or you just want to have peace of mind with having things on hand, you can get ED, ED, ED pills 
on Jace Medical. So you can get your generics for Cialis or Viagra if you go online right now to jacemedical.com. You can receive a 12-month supply of your daily medication. And if you use that promo code at checkout, you'll get a discount as well. So if, if you or someone you love or maybe someone you live with and you tolerate would get peace of mind by having a year supply of whatever daily medicine they might need, go to jacemedical.com, see if it's offered for you. And remember while you're there to use that promo code locked on for $20 off. One more time for you. That's Jace, J-A-S-E, medical.com. And the promo code is locked on. All right. Still a pass first point guard. Still Mike Richmond. You are still listening to Locked on Blazers. Do a breathe, y'all. Wop. Um, I have, uh, when I've been at the arena, I've seen Duop Breathe working out. But then he doesn't get on the active roster. He's been, they've been holding him out in a you know, G League assignment. Like I said, you only get 50 games, so the Blazers have been somewhat judicious when he's not going to play, keeping him on the sidelines. But it has been clear since preseason that he's a better uh, basketball player right now than Moses Brown. I, don't, I, I think that's... That's been obvious in preseason. He was much more productive. The reason that the Blazers would maybe prioritize Brown uh, over Reith is just age, and you know they gave they gave most Brown some some guaranteed money. So there was a financial incentive as well. Uh, Brown isn't two way eligible either. So like if you're if you're going to choose NBA guy versus two way guy, that's got to be that's just like how it has to work. So do up Reith gets a two way contract. A step away from the NBA, a chance to make his NBA debut, and then he's, you know, he's he's behind Rob Williams. He's obviously behind DeAndre Ayton, and the Blazers are just gonna, you know, active roster stuff. Like he's gonna be behind Moses Brown because that's that's the way the money works. But now Rob Williams is out for the year. Uh, that's actually news that that has has officially come out. Uh, Rob Williams out for the season. I meant to lead with that early in the show, but if you stuck around to the 26 minute mark, uh, big news. Like he was going to be out for months or the year. Uh, officially, it is going to be season ending surgery. First reported by Adrian Wojnarowski of of uh, ESPN, and then uh, now uh, announced by the team. So um, it's official. He's done for the season. Uh, Rob's under contract for next year. He can be a Blazer if they want him to be um the 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 big deal for him is to get healthy but no rob for the year so backup big men it's matter right they matter it's not like the guard stuff which eventually they'll have a crowded ish backcourt again and they'll have to figure it out speaking of ish ish wayne Wright active for the first time tonight but yeah get well soon rob a, a bummer i talked about it in the previous show it's just like a bummer it's a bummer it stinks um but hopefully this is a thing that that can that can help him get closer and get his get his knees right and get, have him play basketball again because when he does play he's really fun but now the Blazers are, are, it's DeAndre Ayton and Moses Brown. So they're going to need Reith, right? They're going to need him. They just, they, there's minutes for him. And they're going to, you need to probably carry three centers period just because of foul trouble and just like, you know, a, a random stepping on someone's foot, a random ankle injury that keeps you out for six minutes. You're like, okay, we need another tall person. Um, and the Blazers have been rolling with uh, Tamani Kamara and Jabari Walker as playing the backup five. And that's fine, but probably untenable against a lot of NBA teams. Like it's, it's like you can get away with it for little, little stretches, but it's just like, it's not going to work most nights. And it's probably not fair to Jabari Walker to be like, Oh yeah, you're an NBA center now. It's just like, <laughs> uh, you're not going to, you're not going to maximize him, even though he's a really tough rebounder and you, and he'll, he wouldn't complain. Certainly. So Reith is clearly going to be asked to do some stuff. Rip City Remix begin their season down in El Segundo, uh, the beautiful west side of LA, uh, and uh, the Blazers are happen to be down there. So they assign Chris Murray and they sign um, and, and then they sign Ryan Rupair and then they send the two way guys. You don't their their two way guys are technically G League players, right? So they're just on assignment with the G League. So Justin Manaya is down there and and Duop Reith is down there, um, and Reith and the Blazers in, in the excuse me in the remix first ever game has 37 points, 10 boards, and hits five three pointers. At that point, you knew he was going to get a look. Did you know he was going to play a bunch? No, but you knew he was going to get a look. Like he's not going to have 37 and 10. G League's a little weird, right? Like uh, Theo Pinson used to crush the G League for for Brooklyn's team in Long Island. Crush the G League. Score 30 points, mon- you know, monster in the finals. Uh, like, and he can't stick in the league like it's it's tough um it's it's an interesting thing like you know um Jamari Bouye averaged 17 6 6 two steals on a block like 
and you know he's second team all G League. The, 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 there's numbers to be had, but 37 with five threes for someone who's 6'11", 250, maybe six nine, <laughs> maybe six eight. But like, do a brief like there's like a center size with with long arms. Like that's something you got to see. So of course he plays tonight. It's unquestionable that he was better than than Brown. And if you're gonna play him unleash him he finishes four of ten from the field it's three of eight from three he was one of two inside the arc if you're scoring at home uh a, a tough runner and, and then a bucket inside uh 11 points three assists three boards like a productive 14 minutes and the threes matter because this team can't make shots from the outside uh three of 13 tonight 30 or 13 of 37 excuse me 3 of 13 13 threes uh, on 37 attempts Good number. I think 35 is the number I'd like the Blazers to take. 35 is a really respectable percentage. It's still below the league average, which is, has been the last couple of years right around 36. But like, you just need to, you got to take enough threes to be competitive in the league. Like other teams are going to take threes. You got to be competitive. The Lakers don't. The worst, two worst three-point shooting teams in the league battle in Los Angeles tonight. But Reef is going to matter. His spacing is going to matter. I think that's the key for me. Um, you know, I thought he struggled to guard Anthony Davis a little bit, but I'm not sure that that matters to me at all. <laughs> like, I'm not sure that I'm going to put down in my notes, Duop Reith can't guard Anthony Davis. I'm not worried. I am not worried about that. Um, you know, he on the just open the fourth quarter, he was in that pick and roll where Jackson Hayes got a wide open dunk. Um, and he turned around like he thought he was going to have help, whether he was supposed to have help, whether he was supposed to trap the ball, whether he was supposed to like drop like that will be something I watch going forward. I'd say like, what does Reith do on defense and is he functional there? Cause he has really long arms um, and he was pretty active in summer league on defense. It's different, obviously different level of, of competition, but right now I'm not, you know, not too worried that he couldn't guard AD in this game. Neither could the dude who makes 35 million bucks uh, on the Blazers roster. But um, so Really, it's the other end, and the Blazers are so light on shooting that Duop Reith parking in the corner and taking those high arcing kind of off your shoulder threes. They look good coming out of his hands, a little funky re- release, but they look like they look, they look good. They got good weight on them, and they have nice rotation coming out of his his shot. Like he look, he looks like a shooter shooting the ball. It's like his release looks weird, but like the the shot itself looks coming out. The ball coming out looks looks like he like it's going in. Um, and he makes threes. And if he's going to stand in the corner and space the core, the, the, the Blazers are just so desperate for anyone who can hit, be a knockdown three-point shooter to open up pick and rolls, to open up space for Jeremy Grant to operate, for open up for place spaces for Shade and Sharp to drive. That I like. Give me more wreath. Give me more wreath. Give him. You know, he played 14 minutes in this one. Let's see 18. Let's see. I probably wouldn't play more than like 20, but like, yeah, let's see like a big chunk of Duop Reef playing and see what you get. Figure out what the defense is because I think his offensive skill set as a pick and pop player um, and as just like, he's not like this high level passer, but he can pass. Like he's comfortable. They ran a little, um, it's like a backdoor cut they've run a couple times where they they set up a, a double screen away and then he pretends to set a handoff. The big man pretends to set a handoff and Shaden Sharp goes back to it. They've run it twice. How many times can they more can they run it? Um, probably a couple because of the way way you guard shooters like um, Shaden Sharp. But Watman a nice pass and they got a bucket. Um, I think he can be if he can pass a little bit and shoot a little bit as a high post player. That's a skill set they absolutely do not have, and I want to see more of it. Um, do I have like really high hopes for him? No. Do I have? Do I want to see him play well? Yeah, I really enjoyed him in summer league, um, and I think the best version of Duop Brief answers a lot of sort of skill set, fills a lot of skill set holes the Blazers currently have. Um, and if you don't get the best version of him every night. It's what this kind of season is about, and they'll develop going forward. Uh, that's today's show. That's today's show. We got more shows coming up the rest of the week. Uh, busy week this week. Two, this You are listening to Monday, November 13th show. Uh, Tuesday, they play the Jazz, and what I'm calling, without hyperbole really, the most important game of the Blazers season. Game number 10, baby. They're 3-6, and six, um, but they're 1-0 and 0 in the NBA's in-season tournament. If they beat the Jazz, they'll have a commanding, the Jazz are also undefeated in the, in the early in-season tournament play, a commanding 2-0 record in, uh, in heading into the final two games. So, like, a meaningful Tuesday game against the Jazz. Is it actually meaningful? I don't know. Is it? Would it be fun if they won and were competitive in um, in the in season tournament? Absolutely. If you're a fan, does it like 
And if you're a fan, I think if you're a fan of this team specifically, the Trailblazers, your bar for what it should be is, would this be fun? And if you check the box, yes, absolutely root as, root as hard as you can for it. And it would be fun if the Blazers did well in the in-season tournament. So root as hard as you can for it. Tuesday night, huge game against the Jazz. Wednesday, back against uh, home against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And then Friday, another in-season tournament game against the Lakers. Just a whole bunch of stuff. We got games all week. We'll have shows all week. Five of them. We'll look ahead to the Jazz game in tomorrow's show and do some more fun stuff. It's what we do wherever you get podcasts and also on YouTube. Tell your friends about the program. I appreciate you listening. I'll talk to you soon.